Hello, my name is Frank Downing. I'm a director of research for ARC's Next Generation Internet Theme. And today I'm going to walk you through the Smart Contract Networks section of Big Ideas 2023. Fundamentally, we think smart contract networks have the potential to revolutionize the way we think about and deliver financial services and the internet at large. And we think this could amount to a multi-trillion dollar opportunity by 2030. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the reasons why and what that market outlook looks like. Uh, to start, uh, we can look at kind of the history of smart contract networks, which enable the deployment of uh, arbitrarily complex contracts onto a blockchain so that they can be uh, so that business logic can be operated uh, transparently and autonomously, uh, often without the need for traditional centralized intermediaries uh, to fil facilitate things like financial services transactions, be they transfers of assets, exchanges, lending, etc. And we're also seeing this technology be used to provide digital ownership onto the internet for the first time uh, with the NFT technology. Uh, looking at how uh, these blockchains are being used over time can uh, give us some insight into uh, how they're really gaining traction and how the use cases for them are actually diversifying. So if we take Ethereum, for example, which was launched in 2015, for the first year and a half, two years of its launch, uh, transactions on Ethereum were primarily uh, vanilla transfers of the native asset Ether from one address to another. Uh, as we go through time, we see a pickup in 2017 and 18 of uh, ERC-20 transactions, which are novel assets that are created uh, onto the network. And this was the ICO boom, which eventually turned into a bust, uh, if you remember, in 2018. Uh, it, it actually took some time until 2020 before we saw really what I would call the, the first real true use cases for smart contract networks really finding product market fit, uh, which was the rise of decentralized finance, uh, which we featured in our big ideas section last year. Uh, then going into 2021 and 2022, we saw the rise of NFTs uh, also gain share on, uh, of usage on uh, public blockchains. And then uh, stable coins have been growing steadily throughout as, as another way to settle value on chain that is dollar denominated rather than uh, denominated in a volatile crypto asset. Uh, and as the market sold off at the end of 2022, uh, we saw them uh, increase uh, transaction volume considerably. To talk more about uh, a few of these use cases, I think uh, reflecting on some of the turmoil in the crypto markets in 2022, uh, primarily the deleveraging, uh, risk off motion, and uh, really financial crime that took place throughout that year. Uh, we see decentralized finance as, as a bright spot that, uh, whose value proposition really increased throughout the year. Uh, one example of that is uh, the ability to transact uh, exchange assets in an open and transparent manner while maintaining uh, self-custody. This takes place on what's called decentralized exchanges. And we've seen since they really came out in 2020, the, uh, an increase in transaction volume that's happening on decentralized exchanges as compared to their centralized counterparts. Uh, and in November, when we saw the FTX exchange uh, really blow up because they were misappropriating customer funds and not holding them one-to-one, -one, the decentralized tr uh, trading volume actually shot up as a share of total trading volume from 9% to 14%. And we think this is indicative of, of traders and users preferring the open and transparent rules-based operations of smart contract powered financial services, as opposed to uh, traditional centralized financial services. We can also see promising signs in on-chain lending. Uh, similar to how smart contracts can enable the uh, open and transparent trading of assets through decentralized exchanges, uh, they can also facilitate the lending of assets uh, through decentralized lending markets. Uh, one example is Aave V2, which processed uh, since its launch in 2020, uh, over $100 billion of total cumulative inflows and outflows from its smart contracts. Uh, this has all happened autonomously via smart contracts where the risk controls are publicly available. Everybody can see uh, the collateralization ratios in the network. And that level of transparency and rules-based enforcement of the risk management uh, measures 
is actually what has allowed these lending markets to survive uh, the deleveraging events that we saw. It's a stark contrast to uh, centralized operators like Celsius, who uh, were making sweetheart deals, offering under collateralized loans, uh, the risks of which were not known to the market. And as the market sold off, they found themselves uh, in uh, bad positions that eventually resulted in their bankruptcy and failure. And that happened across the centralized lending space. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, a lot of this activity has been centered around the Ethereum blockchain. And this network in particular underwent several technological upgrades um, in uh, over the past two years that are important to highlight. Uh, the largest of which is the network's transition from proof of work consensus to proof of stake consensus. What this means is rather than uh, miners who are running power intensive GPUs to secure the network, the network is now run and maintained by validators who run a much more lightweight uh, uh, server client and instead uh, post Ether uh, as stake uh, to provide security. What this means in effect is that the network is, is more efficient in terms of where it gets its security from. In doing this, uh, the uh, developers have reduced the amount of Ether that's emitted into the network per day to pay for security. And what that looks like is a drop in uh, new Ether issued per day from about 14,000 Ether to under 2,000. And this is a really significant change in the monetary policy uh, of the Ethereum network, we think. Uh, overall, uh, this drops the, the annual issuance of new Ether from about 4% per year to really close to flat. And depending on transaction fees on the network, uh, the Ethereum, uh, the supply of Ether can now be uh, deflationary, uh, which is a really significant advance in how uh, the economics of the Ethereum network run. Another development we saw in 2022 uh, was the rise of scaling technologies. Uh, as DeFi and NFTs took off uh, over the last two years, the main uh, layer one uh, Ethereum network was really pushed to its limits. And what that caused was transaction fees to skyrocket very high because there's a limited number of transactions that can be supported on that base layer. Uh, the solution here is to create layer two scaling technologies that provide higher throughput and lower fees to the network. And just recently, we've seen uh, two of these layer two networks uh, go live and really start to gain scale. Arbitrum and Optimism are the networks I'm talking about, and they've now come to surpass the average daily transaction volume that happens on the base layer uh, with the capacity to go much farther. Notably, we've also seen at the end of February in 2023, uh, Coinbase, as a centralized exchange, uh, launched their own open source uh, layer two rollup for Ethereum. They're looking to encourage the next generation, uh, the next billion users of decentralized networks on chain, uh, and they're going to be contributing to uh, this open source network uh, as part of that. It's important to note that despite uh, these advancements in technology, there are also concerns around smart contract networks as they scale namely around the risk of uh, increasing centralization and transaction cen censorship. Uh, on the centralization side, as Ethereum transitioned from proof of work to proof of stake, we've seen a, an increasing concentration of the number of entities that have uh, influence over the network uh, and in control over the network security based on the number of ETH that they've staked. Uh, the top three staking services now account for roughly two thirds of total Ether staked. On the transaction censorship side, uh, we've seen uh, an increasing share of blocks uh, that are proposed or created by uh, centralized services that are uh, tending to uh, sensor transactions. One of those is Flashbots that now produces uh, or has influence on about 60% of blocks on the Ethereum network. Uh, now, well, as long as a, a minority share of validators are not censoring transactions, this doesn't uh, mean that uh, censorship is rampant on the base layer, uh, but it is a growing concern that we're watching closely. And this concern is not just limited to the Ethereum network. Uh, as we look over time, uh, one measure of decentralization, uh, of which there are many, uh, can be the percent of supply that's allocated to insiders when a new network launches. And uh, really, Bitcoin stands out here as a network that was launched with no insider supply, really the true fair launch, as it's called. Ethereum had about uh, a little under 20% of the supply allocated to insiders. But over time, we've seen this rise considerably where new networks now seem to have the entire initial supply of the, of the network's token allocated to insiders. 
And what this means is it's much harder for these networks to claim that they're truly decentralized, at least at launch. And I think every new network should have the goal of progressively decentralizing. Uh, there have been two main forces behind this uh, increasing rise of, of insider allocations. Uh, the first is the regulatory consideration. Uh, Ethereum launched at a time where it was possible to do a global initial coin offering and offer a large percentage of the supply to the community who was willing to buy in and support the network. Uh, different regulatory regimes, especially in the United States, are, have frowned upon this approach and, and actually gone after uh, new networks that launch and the development team behind them uh, if they do this. Uh, and then second, the uh, new networks have to compete with incumbents. Uh, when Bitcoin or Ethereum launched, uh, there, there were no incumbents to displace in the, uh, in the blockchain space. Now, if a new network launches in 2023, uh, it needs a war chest of capital of of inside venture capital uh, money to help it compete and win projects over from the existing uh, layer one networks like Ethereum. Taking a step back and thinking what the total opportunity could be, uh, could be of smart contract networks, uh, we think that because of the um, benefits of smart contract networks, the ability to uh, have ownership on the internet, the ability to autonomously manage and transparently manage uh, assets uh, really in a, without intermediaries for the first time over the internet uh, is going to encourage a migration of existing financial assets in the world to move on chain and for novel financial assets to be created natively on chain. If you relate this to the founding of the internet and you think we're in the early 90s, uh, if this scales like the internet did, we could see about 5% of the world's financial assets uh, existing natively on chain by 2030. Uh, and we think because of the attributes of smart contract networks, they'll be able to deliver these uh, financial services around these assets uh, for a much lower take rate than the traditional financial world that's filled with these intermediaries and toll takers. Uh, even if they only charge a third of what traditional financial services um, uh, take and it's 5% of total assets by 2030, we think this could represent a $450 billion market of annual fees that are generated by smart contracts uh, and the underlying networks that power them. Uh, that would represent a 59% uh, CAGR from the estimated 11 billion in total uh, fees generated by smart contracts in 2022. And we think this could support a multi-trillion dollar uh, market value for uh, tokens and assets related to these uh, smart contract protocols. And with that, thank you for viewing the Smart Contract Network section of Big Ideas 2023. If you'd like to dig into the entire report, you can find it on our website, arc-invest.com.